Hi there, my fellow Java programmer. In this episode, you're going to learn how to set up and put a web server like Apache or Nginx in front of your Java application. So let's find out how that works. So there's obviously many Linux distributions you could be using. I'm going to use Ubuntu in this example or in this episode. And more specifically, I'm using the Ubuntu subsystem in Windows. And it doesn't really matter which Ubuntu version, if it's 16 or 4 like I have, or, 8 or the latest one, the principles are all the same. And again, you could be using many different web servers. You could be using Apache, you could be using Nginx. And I'm not saying that one web server is better than the other one. I'm just using Nginx in this example to get you up and ready as quickly as possible. So to install Nginx, all you need to do on Debian-based systems is basically run apt-get install Nginx. And then you need to wait a bit till Nginx gets installed. And after that, you'll see there's a new directory. It's called etc Nginx. And your websites are under sites available. And there's one default website. And that's the one we're going to edit right now. You want to scroll down to the location slash directive. And that's the place where Nginx handles all of your requests. And as you can see, you have a root directory specified to var www.html. And inside here, you have a try files directive, which will mean if someone browses, for example, example.html, Nginx will try to find a file in that directory, in the HTML directory with the file name. And you don't want that. Rather, you want to forward all of your traffic to your Java application. So what you can do is you can delete the line, right? And if you're unsure about Nginx configurations, simply open up your browser, Google for something like Nginx Java configuration, then choose the second link because we're talking about Java servers like Jetty, Glassfish, and Tomcat, not a Java handler. And then in this page, just scroll down a bit and what you need to do is copy these lines and I'll explain them in a second. Go back, paste them inside, right? Now let's have a look at these lines individually. Proxy pass is actually the most important line. It says, well, take the incoming traffic and pass it on to localhost 8080. That's the part where your Java application should be running. Then you've got proxy set header real IP. Now what does real IP mean? If imagine you have a web request coming in, so it hits Nginx first, and then Nginx takes the request and passes it on to your Java application. Now what IP address does the Java application see? It sees the IP address from your Nginx server, which could be localhost. So all the IPs you get in your Java application could be localhost or 127.0.0.1. And if you put the real IP here, the web server is smart enough to figure out, or the Java server is smart enough to figure out, well, the IP is actually the client IP and not the localhost. And as an exercise, I want you to have a look at the page we were just on and find out what the X forwarded for and host headers do. Good, that's all you need to do. So now save the file. Then just have a quick look if Nginx is running. Is not running, so you start it. Uh, it started okay. Now open up Firefox again. Go to localhost. And you get an error message. It's actually quite a good error message. It's a 502 bad gateway, which means Nginx got the request, but there was no backend server up and running. And that's why you got a 502 bad gateway. Let's change that, go to your application, and then simply run it. And if everything is right, the application should boot up just fine. And you can double check it's Tomcat started on port 8080. So now when you go back to the 502 bar gateway, hit F5 again, that looks great. Looks different, white label error page. Hold on for a second, why do you get an error page? Because you have nothing served under the root. The REST API needs to be called with like slash customers. Hit slash customers and you get XML back from your Java application, which is great. And everything you wanted to achieve in this episode, 
you have Nginx installed, you have your Java application running, you have very simple configuration to call your Java application. And as always, you can have a look at it. Most important line is proxy pass. And that's really all you need to do. And if you had a real, let's say, domain name and wanted to point a domain name to your server with some DNS records, you could then just go, okay, respond to marcobilo.com, www.marcobilo.com, remove the underscore here, and you would basically have a working configuration for Nginx and your Java application. Congratulations, you now know how to get up and running with Nginx and your Java application. And up next are some more advanced deployment topics like gzipping and whatnot. So let's get right after it.